Hey everybody, this is Kai Altair here, and I am making this video because I am finally, finally USDA ready to be inspected. Um, it's been a very long journey, um, but I finally got the alert that they were going to go ahead and move towards getting uh, scheduled inspection so they can check my former carrium and either give me the thumbs up or the thumbs down, but hopefully it'll be a thumbs up. Um, I don't have a date as of right now, but uh, within a few weeks, I imagine by tomorrow, I'll be contacted by them so they can tell me what they plan to do and what days and times they have available. Um, it's been a long journey, but I'm glad I finally got to this point. It's better late than never, definitely. So a um, few hiccups I ran into was um, one, which is really an update, I requested some extra ant species. And some of those species would be uh, the Fus Formica fusca, which are the ants that spray formic acid when alarmed. Uh, weaver ants, and those are ants that use their larva, the silk that the larva make, so that they can actually weave a home for themselves, which is quite interesting now I think about it. Um, and I also ordered, um, not ordered, I um, requested some beginner ant species, such as you know your normal fire ant, as well as some um, garden ants, um, as well as black ants as well, which are also known as sugar ants, depending on where you're from. For me, I know black ants are sugar ants. But I ordered those and all those overall so that I could be better acquainted on ant keeping. Um, I don't want to learn just how to take care of one ant species, but several. Um, not too much to the point where I'm overwhelmed, but enough so that I can have a good understanding on what certain ants require. And I think it'd be good just for my aptitude as well. And sharing it with you guys here in the YouTube space over in the interwebs. So without further ado, oh, actually before I get into that, I actually had another issue, uh, which was the tubing. Uh, if you look at some of my previous videos when I first started this channel, uh, you could see that uh, for the wooden enclosure that I had, I actually wanted them to go from one enclosure to the other via a set of tubes. Uh, the issue with the USDA, or at least the issue that they had, was that they thought that the ants could somehow chew their way out and go free. Um, I beg to differ considering there are plenty of ant keepers out there who use the same type of tubing I use um, and they have ants that have majors, super majors even, but they don't chew out the tubing. But I'll leave that for an actual experiment that I will be putting on YouTube in the coming months uh, if I get the approval that I'm hoping for. Uh, once that's done, then I can call them up and say, hey, I did this experiment. I already checked with these YouTubers. They said they've never had an issue. Do you mind amending it so I can put them in a different containment? Um, but that'll be way out in the future. But for right now, let me go ahead and show you guys my brand new glass formicarium. Alrighty, guys, here is my ant formicarium here. Um, as you can see, uh, there's a little bit of condensation up here, but that's because um, I had the window open, it was a big storm, so it was really humid in here uh, for right now. But I have these vents open, so I don't really have to worry too much about it staying in there because it's just gonna come out of these tubes and we'll be good to go. So, um, the inspiration for this, um, I already wanted to have a fish tank design because I thought it'd just be better. But the idea for me came once I figured out how to adhere the plexiglass levels that you can see here, how to actually get it to stay on the glass because I couldn't mount it using you know some kind of tool because if you break the glass and you can get shards everywhere. Um, I also did not want to use some kind of magnet because what if you can't remove it for some reason? So then I was like, I could use silicone. So that's what I use in this construction. So I had my cock gun with some silicone. I also have these L brackets, which actually support the plexiglass walls, uh, plexiglass floors, I mean, not walls. And I have these pipe straps, and they fit over these four tubes. Um, and some plexiglass. And that was all I really needed. So what I did, as you can see, there's a dividing wall here of just pure silicone that you know I made sure I pretty it up. I prettied up. Um, the point is, when I'm going to go ahead and get the ants in here, trying to get them in, what I'm going to do, let me show you guys. Uh, 
So what I'm going to do is loosen this pipe strap because if you can see here, it actually has a little notch where you put a flathead screwdriver and I would loosen this tubing and it actually can sink down. If you check here, you can, well, not on this side, but if you look here below, you can see that tube. Once I loosen it, I can get it to extend down to the soil level and it is also scarred. I used some scarification with some sand. So what I did was get some sand, put a tube on here, and then I got a piece of bamboo and I kept going back and forth. And what that did is create a whole bunch of scratches which can serve as gripping surfaces for the ants. And that way I can introduce them. And once the ant queen or colony is successfully been transported into this glass formicarium, all I have to do is put the tube right back up and then redo the pipe strap and then it'll be good to go. Uh, I actually use a Dremel. This is this here is plexiglass. I actually use a Dremel to make a hole and that hole was so perfect I actually don't need to worry about sealing it with silicone because the holes are either way too small and they're out of reach for the ants to even crawl um, up, up upon. But as an added measure, I also have this cap that I just have to fit in here. And then once it's in, I'm doing this with one hand, mind you, so it's going, there you go. Um, I also have this cap like this, so that even if they were to somehow get through this tube, there's nothing for them to get to, because um, there's no real promised land of freedom. So they just crawl right back down or fall if they can even get up here in the first place. Here you see a larger tubing, and this is for feeding. Uh, how this is cat is I just use this tubing cat and I just fit it right in here and that provides a pretty good seal. Um, there's actually no openings that I've been able to see um, so I normally just keep this on cat for venting purposes. Um, I changed the temperature because one it was very humid outside and two um, I use different temperatures depending on the time of day, um, like anyone, average person, and it created a lot of humidity, so I just open these up to vent them. Uh, what I'm actually going to probably end up doing for this transport tube that you see me taking the cap out of um, is put a filter in here so that even if ants were to get in, it would be the same as using this hard plastic, meaning that it allows ventilation to come through so that this doesn't, this form of carrier isn't so... Um, humid, it doesn't have so much condensation, they actually have a place to get out of. Um, if you look very carefully on this feeding tube, you can see some condensate right here, and you can tell they've been leaving primarily from this tubing as opposed to the transport tube. And they have it on both sides uh, because the original idea was to have two separate colonies put together, but I changed my mind and decided to keep them together. However, I wanted to ensure that they were able to get fed um, as required, and if I really needed to clean them, I could also use these transport tubes for that. Um, so they're not going to stay here forever. Um, as their size grows, I may end up uh, connecting these. So that would involve getting a second um, glass formicarium set up and then connecting them with tubes. However, before I do that, I need to do an experiment to ensure that they can't chew through these tubes. Um, I highly doubt they would even try it because there's no ventilation or anything for them to try and get through or chew through. And this is quite hard plastic, especially like this one is very hard plastic. This is a little bit more malleable, but this is just a thicker container, a uh, thicker edge, as you can see, comparing them side by side. So let me go ahead and put this back on a tripod and we'll go from there. The next question is how are they going to travel from one floor to the other? So as you can see this is divided into three floors. So that has three floors up here and then this last floor making it the fourth one. So the way they're going to travel, um, once I get this either approved or denied, I'm going to go ahead and split this because this top part is sealed with silicone. I'm going to go ahead and take the silicone off of it and gonna put some decorations in, probably just some sticks, so that they'd be able to get from one surface to the other. And I also made sure that I shortened it. So if you look at it from the side, you can actually see where they've been cut in half. So here's the L bracket that sealed the silicone, 
and you can see it's shortened significantly. And the point of that is so that when I actually do uh, cleanings and have to change out the soil because it has too much waste, dead bodies, or what have you, all I have to do is lift it, take it out, pour the soil to the next lowest level, and then I can remove it. Um, as you can see here, I have that silicone seal all around it. It's more noticeable in some more places than not, but that's how I ensure that they can't get out is sil sil silicone. So they can travel all around, up, down, whatever access you want, but they cannot leave this enclosure. And I'm gonna have the caps and the uh, filters as well. So that's why you see it's so shortened. And I'm also planning to have a heat lamp um, above it. It's gonna be a low output heat lamp. And I'll just to ensure that one side is warm and create that temperature gradient. So one side is going to be uh, warm and dry and the other one's going to be cool and wet. And by doing that, it allows the ants to uh, make a decision on which side of the former care they wanna be on, have their babies and whatnot. And by giving that, that choice, it uh, mimics a natural, more natural at least, um, atmosphere because instead of being stuck in one temperature range, they can go to either or. So with that being said, um, this is a pretty good sample to show the USDA inspectors. Um, however, there are some improvements I would like to make in future iterations of this uh, format. Uh, one would be the soil retention. So if you look at this, you can tell there's nothing that's holding the soil from all just sliding to the first floor and being totally empty, just having exposed plexiglass, which doesn't matter either or for the ants, but it would create a more natural environment for them if the soil stayed here. So what I'd probably end up doing in the future is getting a small lip, probably a one inch by 15 inch lip that I would seal with uh, L brackets and silicone. And that'll ensure that even if this were to tip for some reason, you know, say I'm carrying it, um, not break, but it would tip, that the soil doesn't all come out on the first floor and that it just stays in this respective floor because this is a very thin layer of soil um, on all sides minus the first floor, which has a little bit thicker um, soil level. The next thing I would also like to change would be to have an aeration system. As of right now, there is no real air being pumped in and pumped out. Um, it's just the different pressures determine whether air gets forced in or out. What I'd probably do is get an aquarium bubbler and connect it via tubing to this glass form aquarium and then turn it on so that all the air comes in and then it also gets pumped out. That'll ensure that it doesn't get so much moisture that it starts clouding up the uh, glass as you can see here which was a lot worse about two or three hours ago because you could not see anything at first. So that would definitely be something that I change um, in a future iteration. Or I could just take the silicone off and use a Dremel to make a hole and put the tube in and it would do the same thing. So I'll probably end up going with that. So this is the glass form carrier. This is the full look of it. I was gonna make some improvements as you guys already heard a few seconds ago. But yeah, this took about two days to make. It wasn't that difficult. Um, all you gotta do is just know what you're doing, get your measurements right, your plexiglass cuttings correct, which I got from the hardware store, so it was no big deal. So let's go ahead back into the studio and we'll go from there. Alrighty guys, so we are back here at the end of this video. Um, so I plan to make my next video by the 22nd of May as far as the Kite Talks About Ants uh, video playlist. And that gives two weeks for the USDA to coordinate with me and me coordinate with them to make an actual uh, inspection date. So it should be no more than two weeks. So um, I could make a video post a lot sooner, um, as soon as next week, possibly, uh, depending on them, though everything is in their court at this point in time. Um, my next video would be scheduled for the 29th of May as well. So 22nd and 29th of May will be two and three weeks from now you will definitely be uh, getting a video post from me in reference to how this inspection went, what's going down, um, if I got approval denied or not, uh, and what changes I'm going to make were I to get denied 
and what steps I'm going to be taking uh, to order new ants if I were to get approved. So without further ado, thanks for watching this video. This is Kyle Altera here, hoping you guys have a very blessed day. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next video.